you know the Sassani, whose name means beings of light, are an extraordinary humanoid extraterrestrial race from the distant planet Assassini, nestled near the Orion constellation, about 500 light years away from Earth. This fascinating species is the result of a hybridization between Earth humans and the Zeta Reticulan Greys, crafted to combine the finest traits of both races. From their Zeta ancestry, the Sasani have inherited powerful telepathic abilities, exceptional longevity, heightened sensitivity, and advanced intellectual and scientific prowess. Meanwhile, their human lineage has gifted them with emotional depth, a vibrant sexuality, and strong physical capabilities, as well as an insatiable curiosity and a natural drive for swift progress and innovation. The Sasani, standing around five feet tall, possess grayish skin that reflects their hybrid origins. While their appearance bears similarities to the Zeta Reticulan Greys, they are notably distinct. Their heads, though still slightly larger than human proportions, are not as exaggerated as the Zetas. And their eyes, though wide and striking, blend more harmoniously with their softer facial features. One of the most intriguing aspects of their physicality is that only female Sasani have hair, which ranges from straight to curly, and is most commonly white, though there are exceptions. This unique blend of Zeta intellect and human emotional depth makes the Sasani a fascinating example of advanced evolution. As a species, the Sasani are in the midst of an extraordinary transition, moving from the fourth to the fifth dimension. This evolution parallels humanity's own shift from the third to the fourth dimension. Operating on a different frequency, the Sasani exist in a parallel reality that aligns with Earth's, yet remains separate in its timeline. Their civilization is highly advanced, characterized by synchronicity and an evolved state of consciousness that transcends the need for formal governance. Rather than relying on governments or systems of control, the Sasani function through a networked collective consciousness. Each individual contributes to the whole based on their natural talents and desires, and decision-making is guided by synchronicity and telepathic connections. In their society, every Sasani intuitively understands the needs of the group and acts in perfect harmony with the collective. There is no need for monetary exchange or bartering as everything is provided freely. Each individual is naturally aligned with their true purpose, offering their skills where needed in a spirit of cooperation and joy. Their lives are spontaneous, joyful, and rooted in creating harmonious experiences for all. The number three holds deep cultural significance for the Sassani, symbolizing communication and unity. This is reflected in the triangular scout crafts they use to explore the galaxies and communicate with other civilizations within the Galactic Federation of Light. For those who frequently encounter triangles in dreams or meditations, it is believed to be a connection to the Sasani's collective consciousness, offering a glimpse into their world of synchronicity and shared purpose. A representative of the Sasani, known as Bashar, meaning messenger, has been in communication with Earth for many years through a man named Daryl Anker. Bashar has shared vast amounts of knowledge with humanity, and interestingly, other individuals on Earth have also channeled beings from the Esasani world. When comparing these messages, the consistency in tone, message, and expression is remarkable. This likely stems from the fact that the entire Sasani race is telepathically connected, speaking as one collective voice through anyone who can tune into their high-frequency energy. Bashar has revealed that the planet Esasani, meaning place of living light, is home to approximately 230 million Sasani. However, many now live aboard enormous, city-sized starships, some spanning between 1 to 10 miles in length. Esasani itself is a pristine, park-like planet with no major structures. It is predominantly used for recreation, its landscape lush and serene, a perfect embodiment of their harmonious lifestyle. With a small axial tilt of just 3 to 4 degrees, Esasani enjoys a stable, mild climate. Temperatures remain a comfortable 20 centigrade throughout the year. 
the planet's 25-hour days and 454-day years are the result of its wider orbit around a hotter sun, which gives Esasani its unique rhythm. The atmosphere is rich in oxygen, which might cause lightheadedness for humans at first, but they could quickly adjust to live there comfortably. What sets the Sasani apart from Earth humans is their accelerated evolution, advancing 10 times faster due to their unique dimensional frequency. They utilize energy sources that do not harm the environment, such as clean and renewable energy forms, harnessed from natural forces like sunlight, planetary magnetism, and subtle dimensional energies. The Sasani evolve at a rate 10 times faster than Earth's inhabitants due to the unique dimensional frequency of their existence. Their male and female energies are perfectly balanced, enabling them to live fully in the present, free from dwelling on or judging past experiences as humans often do. They avoid polarities, existing in a state of unity, and create their own perception of time. Their evolution has been guided by advanced races, particularly the Pleiadians. And while they live in a physicalized world, their experience of time differs from that of humans. Their method of reproduction is also unique. Offspring are created energetically, outside the body, through an energy bubble infused with higher mind-spirit consciousness. This process allows the spirit to form the body, rather than the other way around. Children in the Sassani society make a conscious choice to join them, and by the age of three Earth years, they are able to explore independently, guided by telepathy. Since all Sassani are connected telepathically, everyone knows where each individual is, and every child is considered the responsibility of the entire community. They create safe environments for their children to discover themselves, receiving what they need when they need it, guided by synchronicity. The Sasani civilization is also in the process of elevating their planetary consciousness to a higher state. Planets and civilizations evolve together in triads, and Earth, Essentia, and the Sirius system form one such triad. This triad operates as a unified consciousness, which then connects with other triads, such as those of Arcturus and Polaris. Currently, their focus is on exploring dimensions they had not previously encountered as reflections of their higher consciousness, assisted by non-physical beings connected to the vibrational realm of Sirius. The Sasani have come to guide humanity on its journey toward the fifth-dimensional Earth, offering love and support as they assist in this transition. When asked about current exploration, Bashar revealed that the Sassani are investigating new dimensions as a reflection of their own higher consciousness. With guidance from non-physical beings connected to the vibrational realm of the Sirius star system. Near the end, it is important to note that the Zeta Reticulans played a crucial role in the creation of the Sassani race. In the third dimension on Earth, Zeta Reticulans abducted humans with rare blood types, specifically AB and RH negative, as part of a genetic program to revitalize their dying race. Through these abductions, the Zetas sought to create biracial hybrids of humans and Zeta Reticulans. The fusion of human DNA with Zeta genetics resulted in the birth of the Sasani race, blending the best qualities of both species to ensure the survival and advancement of the Zeta Reticulan lineage. This hybridization process, guided by the Zeta's advanced genetic engineering, allowed them to overcome their reproductive challenges and create a new race that was not only physically robust, but also possessed the Zeta's intellectual and telepathic abilities, along with the emotional, creative, and physical vitality of humans. Thus, the Sasani were born from this merging of two species, serving as a bridge between human and extraterrestrial genetics. It was September 19th, 1961, a night that still feels like a dream and a nightmare. Barney and I were driving back from a quick getaway to Canada, cruising down Route 3 through the White Mountains of New Hampshire. It was just after 10 p.m. and the road was quiet nothing but the hum of the car and the stars hanging heavy in the night sky. Do you see that? I asked, pointing at a bright light hovering above the trees. At first it seemed like a star, but it was moving, darting in strange patterns, 
unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Barney was silent for a moment, watching the light, his brow furrowed. It's probably just a plane, he said, but I could hear the doubt in his voice. It wasn't a plane. Planes don't move like that, I said. The light kept following us. I could feel my pulse quickening, a cold dread settling in my chest. We pulled over to get a better look, and that's when the light got closer, larger, until I could see the outline of something metallic, an actual craft hovering silently in the sky. Barney was terrified, muttering under his breath. It's following us. Barney pulled over the car on the side of the empty road and grabbed his binoculars. And as he peered through them, I could see the colour drain from his face. The craft suddenly appeared in the middle of the road in front of us, and we were frozen. And then, nothing. Just blank. I don't remember how we got home. We should have been home by 2am. But we didn't walk through the door until after 5. Hours were missing, gone from our lives, like someone had hit pause and fast-forwarded through time. We were dazed, confused, as if we'd slipped into another place or time and only half remembered our way back. For days, we tried to ignore it, pretend it was just a strange sighting, but deep down, I knew. Something had happened that night. Eventually, I started telling people, close friends, family, most didn't believe me, but I knew what we saw. We had been taken. There's no other explanation. Under the hypnosis of a professional hypnotherapist, the memories came back in pieces for my husband Barney and I. Being aboard a sleek ship, strange, short grey beings examining us, probing us like we were animals under a microscope. They communicated, but not through words. They did not have human movements or emotions. The aliens weren't like the men in jumpsuits from the science fiction movies. They were short, grey skin, large heads and dark, unblinking eyes, cold and calculating, yet oddly curious, like scientists studying a new species. And they were studying us, probing us, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally. I remember lying there, unable to move, feeling their presence in my mind. It was terrifying, and yet, there was something almost clinical about it, like they didn't mean us harm, but we were just another part of their research, another species to analyze. Barney was more reluctant to accept it. He didn't want to talk about it, didn't want to believe that we'd been abducted by extraterrestrial beings. I kept thinking about those early stories from the 1940s, the UFO sightings after Kenneth Arnold's report of flying discs near Mount Rainier, and then George Adamski meeting that man from Venus in the desert, warning us about nuclear weapons. There was a pattern, a reason they were contacting us. They were concerned about what we were doing to ourselves. For the longest time, I wondered why us? Why Barney and I? Was it because we were an interracial couple living in a world where we didn't quite fit in? Was it our blood? Did that make us stand out to them like an anomaly on their radar? Or was it just random? Either way, we were chosen and our lives were never the same. <laughs>